there are some pretty convincing theoretical arguments and also the evidence to back it up. So basic laws of supply and demand tell us that if you produce more of a good, the price for it is going to come down. But the fact is real estate doesn't operate in an environment where those classic supply and demand laws apply. So I'll give you an example. If you uh, increase the price of houses, classic supply and demand tells us that demand for those houses is going to go down. Um, and that's partly because of something called the income effect. So if you have a set amount of income and the price of an asset goes up, you have less purchasing power to buy that house. But then let's introduce one of the institutional frameworks that housing is operating in. So the ability to take equity out of your home to borrow and buy. What that does, if you own a home, is you can turn that home into purchasing power. So what happens when the price of houses increase is that rather than your purchasing power diminishing, it's actually enhanced. So that's just one example of how financial regulation changes and distorts that classic model of supply and demand. Um, and I recently got to see Lawrence Murphy from the University of Auckland talk on this issue as well. And he did very interesting economic analysis of developer behaviour. And he made the very good point that developers aren't going to supply more housing when they think the price is going to go down. So developers use price expectations as a signal as to whether to supply more housing or not. Um, so it makes sense that as the values in Sydney have increased, so to have uh, this has the supply of housing and uh, we, there is there is evidence to back this up as well so I've looked at historical median values um, and looked at how they have moved up uh, against ABS dwelling construction data as well those things are moving together rather than inversely uh, and there's also uh, econometricians who have done uh, forecasting and modeling which has shown that uh, if you um, increase the supply of houses by hundreds of thousands of residential dwellings every year for you know however many years it's going to have a marginal impact on reducing prices and it's going to have a marginal impact on affordability. Essentially what it tells us is that increasing the supply of housing in Sydney is not going to effectively reduce prices and it's not going to adequately improve the affordability situation. And we have the data to back this up as well. So I plotted the historical median values uh, using on the house data uh, for the past 35 years and I laid that over ABS dwelling construction data which tells us how many residential dwellings are under construction at any point in time. Uh, it's hard to do a Sydney level analysis because the ABS data only breaks down to a state level. But even at a state level, you can see that the median values and the supply of dwellings are, move, are moving in the same direction. And this is particularly evident since the start of the latest housing boom. Um, in March 2013 up to uh, March 2015, um, the amount of residential dwellings under construction went up 31%. So in two years time, the amount of dwellings under construction has gone up by a third. And then against that, the median house value in New South Wales has increased 27%. So there's a clear direction upwards of both dwellings and median values, which is telling us that it's not that classic supply and demand going on. Evidence from different housing markets overseas shows that um, reducing investor activity in the market can dramatically reduce dwelling prices and can increase affordability. But I do think we have to be careful um, not to vilify investors. We need to think about why people are investing in housing and not just that they are investing in housing. So I think a holistic approach to the demand side factors, um, you could look at things like pension reform, healthcare costs, 
you could look at incentives to invest in shares and small business as opposed to housing assets. Um, and on the supply side, I think if you want to create affordable housing, then that's something that you have to make happen. Uh, you have to designate areas of affordable housing so that people don't get priced out of the areas in which they live and work.